everybody, it's Sam the Backwards Mama Crafter. Today, as promised, our first loom video. We're going to start from the beginning. So if you already know this, guys, by all means, you don't have to watch it again. If you just need a refresher, this shouldn't be that long of a video. Um, we're just going over the four knit stitches and the purl stitch, and that's it. And your homework for tonight, to, your homework for this week will be to practice just practice. Don't worry about binding off. Just keep wrapping and keep going. And just use scrap yarn that's not important. Practice your stitches. Once we go over them, that'll be your homework. Okay, so today, all we need the pick or the knitting tool, scrap yarn. Mine has more husky hair than yarn. And a loom. I'm using the red in my kit. It is. Um, for the Nifty Knitter, it is the same color. It is the only difference is, is again the gauge is smaller, so I can actually use it properly. Um, so yep. Now, first one, as you can see, I've already cast on. Um, I personally prefer to slip my first knit, my first stitch. Um, I also found out if you purl the first the first and last stitch it doesn't come out right you need to knit both of them <laughs> no matter what the pattern says or because then half of it comes out all wonky so first one is e-wrap you're literally going to go behind we're going to skip that first peg go behind and just wrap like an e and that's it get my hand out of the way this is so much easier with my little tool, but it's on my other project I'm working on. See? And then just you go all the way to the last stitch. I hold it here, and then what you're going to do is you're going to pick up the bottom and bring it over at the top. Now this is tight because of the stitch I did before. I was just giving myself a refresher because it's been a while. And then you just up and over. get it in the frame up and over 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 and the last one up and over now what I like to do is I like to push down so I have more room to work now we're gonna e wrap back so we're gonna go the opposite direction we're gonna go wrap towards where we're going Instead of away from where we were going. So now it's the same thing as before. Just wrap. And then what remember what I said I like to do? Knit that last stitch worked off. And then just knit all of them off again. All I'm doing is just a simple um, 10 peg little swatch. There's no sense of using a good yarn. This is just cheap yarn that I had laying around the house. Just, well, actually all my yarn is cheap. Um, just cheap, super saver. Okay, so next is the unit. Okay, so now we're on to U-Wrap. So literally all you're going to do is we're going to skip the first stitch. We do that. I do that for everything. And you're literally going to take it, wrap it around. And don't finish wrapping it around. Just hold it. Just like so. And then just knit off. Just like so. Again. Wrap. up and over. This is a tighter stitch than the E-wrap. I have tight tension, so yeah. And over. Wrap and knit off. Wrap and knit off. Wrap and knit off. Wrap and knit off, wrap, and knit off. 
And now we're going to go and do the same thing for the way back. Skip the first one, wrap, and knit off. Wrap. 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 Knit off. Like I said, these these are tighter. Wrap. And knit off. And the last stitch. Wrap. And knit off. It's that simple. Okay. Now for what's called, so what I want you to do is for each one, do a chunk. Don't count. Don't worry about counting. Just do a chunk. Wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap. And do your E-wraps, 10 rows or so. Then do your U-wraps, 10 rows or so. Now we're going to do the flat stitch. This one's easy to set up, but it's tight. So literally, you see how I have it laying? You're literally going to pick up and knit off. Pick up, knit off. Pick up. Like I said, these stitches get tighter and tighter as you go. The smaller the loom, the tighter they get. That's the only downside of working with small looms. It gets tight. I'm not a fan of these, which is why I stick with E-Wrap, because it's big and loose. See, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have a bent pick by the time I'm done. And then, again, pick. Now let's see if I can move them down. Oh, there we go. Now we're going to the same thing again. Over, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. up and just over sorry for my hand getting in the way up and over and then last stitch if I can find it there we go up and over all right there you go there is your flatten it this stuff is tight very very tight um, I am a Avid believer in E-Wrap. Okay, the last stitch. So I want you to do those for 10 or so. Don't break your looms. Don't break your hands trying to do this. It's not worth it. We're going to skip again. And the last one is called a... This is Chief Meteorologist Ryan Blitzen. Breaking weather alert has been issued in your area. It's good. Stay with the 11 weather app. Sorry, it's going to be hot today. And my phone says... It's telling me it's going to be hot. And the last one is... A true knit. So what you do is you still lay it over top. But what you're gonna ah wait, forgot something. There we go. See how it's laid over the top. Now what we're gonna do? I flip it upside down so I can see what I'm doing. You're going to grab your hook, grab your yarn, bring it up, off the peg, pull it off the peg. Now remember, I didn't do any E-wrap, so these stitches are tight. And then just put it back and pull.
bring it down like so. Sometimes when it gets too tight, what you do, you just lift. Slide it off with your, use your tools. Slide it off like so. See? Do one more. Come from the bottom. The only reason why I say bottom is because, um, yeah, it looks like the top from where I'm coming from because I'm doing it upside down. That's another thing I am not a fan about this particular stitch is if you don't grab it all, you fray your yarn. Now, being that it's tight because of the flat knit, just pull it off like so. And then put it back on and pull. Now, this stitch is going to be as tight or as loose as your tension is. If you rank on it after you're done, it's going to be tight. If you just let it be a little bit loosey-goosey, it's not going to be as tight. Because actually, you can see where I did the um, two rows of flat. This thing is so tight, it's suffocating on the pegs. So again, up, like so. Sometimes it gets a little frayed, just take it, take your hook out. If you feel it start to pull on yarn when it shouldn't, just take your hook out and re-put it back through it. It will fix it so you don't fray your yarn. Pull it off the peg, put the, put the big loop on, and pull, but not super tight or you're never going to be able to work your yarn. Work with your yeah. Work with your yarn. Again, up, off, new loop on, and pull. But remember, not super tight. Don't reef on it. That might have been a pearl stitch. <laughs> Whoops. I think so. off yep I need a pearl stitch pearls from the bottom knits from the top oops <laughs> so okay you just got a quick preview of the pearl stitch too this is why I do e wrap because I don't really have to pay attention. If I don't pay attention, I get lost in my stitches and I end up going back to the pearl because I do the pearl more than I do the true knit. Unless, you know, unless a pattern calls for true knit, I don't use it. And then just lift it off the peg. Down we go. Just like so. And see, believe it or not, I don't know if you can see that. It's actually not that bad of a border. This side looks better. It's actually can't really see it that well. But it's it's neat and organized. It's not like all bunchy and you could actually sew it together. So I think instead of the pearl stitch today, just focus on those four knit stitches for this week. And then we'll do next week I think we'll do uh, a simple project and um well, I'll show you the pearl stitch too. Okay? So that's it, and I will see you in the next video.